Hey everybody, this is Grace. I want to start this video by telling a story of something that happened to me just yesterday. And I want, I'm going to try to just tell the story without any additional stuff. And then at the end of it, I will add the additional stuff. Um, if that makes any sense. So I want you to listen to it from the beginning to the end. And don't just make your, if you're going to judge, judge by the beginning of it. Okay, got that. Now, it happened yesterday, like I said. And I will have to add a little bit of extra stuff. Like this man, it was about a man, let's say he's around age 40, so let's call him the 40 year old man. And um, he's someone I don't know, I don't personally know, never did, I've never ran across him. Truck next to me, he was taking his half out of the middle. <laughs> oh, real life is gonna happen in the middle of this video. But anyway, th this man, I don't know him, he's the 40, 40 year old man. I've heard about him, I don't know him, but I've heard about him. And what I've heard about him is basically that he is narcissistic. He thinks he, um, he owns everything. Like he is, you know, nobody can tell him he's wrong. And, you know, whatever he does, he's going to do whatever he wants. It's what I've heard, okay. now. What I heard it from originally was, I didn't hear it myself, I heard it from someone else. But the, head, the man over him, he told him to stop doing that. You know, to stop um, just doing whatever he wants and thinking everybody's supposed to say okay. And over him, he would say, well, are you really? Because he can't seem to do anything about it. The guy still does what he wants to do, the 40 year old man. And uh, so, yeah. Now, I had heard that, like I said, this man was told that he, sh he needs to stop doing this one particular thing. Now, if he stopped doing that one particular thing, it would benefit me. I would be one of the people that, one person who was benefited. But, hey, I had nothing to do with what was told to this guy. Okay, I don't know him. So, yesterday, this guy, this 40-year-old guy, the narcissistic type of personality, um, he decided to do what he was told by that his higher up not to do. He decided to do it in front of me. Okay? Me. Only me. I was the only person there. <laughs> yeah. When he did it, and I am serious with this, he said something. I, I couldn't understand. He mumbled or whatever it was, but he said it and he had this smirk on his face like a narcissistic smirk like he's doing something in defiance and and he got a, he's gonna get away with it and he's gonna smirk to let me know that's how he you know. and seriously at this point I can tell you I wouldn't be able to pick him up and line pick him out in the lineup if I, if I had to because all I saw was that Chesh Cheshire is it grin just a big grin on his face that narcissistic grin narcissistic smirk Okay. And I have been around this type, you know, all my life. I'm 56 years old, and here is this guy doing something to, sh and what he was doing, he did it, and then how he was, what he said. Basically, he was trying to tell me that he dominates, you know. He dominates over everybody and everything, and he can do what he wants to, and, you know, rebellious, like a rebellious teenager or, you know, a defiant child. And... Yeah, I've done plenty of videos about this kind of thing. And when he did what he did, I was not, I was close enough, but like I said, I would not be able to pick him out. But I, I said, why did you do that? And before I could finish what I was saying, because I had more to add to that, he, um, he immediately told me that it was my fault. <laughs> It was my, I'm laughing, but it's not funny. Yeah. It's textbook, really textbook. He said it was my fault. He did the whole projection, the whole, you just whip out the, the whole book and there it is. And uh, so then he, he was walking away and he was walking toward another group of men who are much like them, much like him from what I understand. And he was walking toward them. Now this isn't close to me, he was walking away. So he decides to yell out because I'm not, I'm standing my ground with him. I'm not going to let him cross over my boundaries, you know, 
And I'm standing my ground. I'm not taking that crap off of anybody. You know, I've seen enough of it in my lifetime. So I'm, I'm coming back at him with logic. Oh, boy. <laughs> Come back with logic. And about what, why what he did, he shouldn't have done. And, um, yeah, some people say, you just shouldn't have engaged. I'm, I'm dead. And I'm going to. I'm going to stand my ground and mark my boundary in the sand with that kind. Oh, no, you're not going to treat me that way. Uh-uh. And I'm not going to let someone think that they can in the future again. You see? Setting that boundary. Anyway, he walked off. And when he got far enough, when he got close to that group of other men, much like him, of course, he had safety in numbers that way from this one little woman. Not so little, more like Xena. But he got away, you know, way over there, and he screamed out at me. Now, you tell me what this has to do with anything. He screamed out at me that it was on even though it's summer. But, yeah, he, this guy screamed out at me this. As he got far enough away, like I said, around his uh, other men like him. Seriously. He screamed out, I bet your husband really loves you. Now, my response was kind of funny. And I, because I, you know, yelled it out too. And it, it was something that just popped into my head. I, I don't even think I thought. Had a, t took a second to think. Seriously. And I really probably should not have said this because it sounds like one thing but that is not what was in my brain at all which you might think no that wasn't what was in my brain but anyway he yells out from way across there with his protective the friends protecting him he goes I bet your husband really loves you and I yelled back I doubt yours does <laughs> or I bet yours doesn't I think it was I bet yours doesn't okay I don't know if the guy's married or to at all or to a male or female at all. I don't know. From what I understand, I wouldn't think anybody would want to marry him. But we all know how that works. Yeah, we don't know they're narcissistic until they decide that they're where they're uh, target and they can get away with it. And I wasn't going to let this guy get away with it. Start adding more in. Now, you know, not letting them get away with it, what do they do? Some of them, some of them, oh boy, narcissistic injury, narcissistic rage. They come after you. They do anything they can to cause you pain, misery, and all that stuff. But at the same time, you'll hear people blame the victim, which you should not do. And they'll say, well, you should have set your boundaries. You should have, you know, said something. Then other people say, well, you should just uh, have gone gray rock and you shouldn't say anything. One size doesn't fit all in any of this. Nobody can give you advice on what you should do right there in that moment if they're not there. And you're right there in the moment. You don't have time to go, okay, I'm going to go to my counselor and ask my counselor about this beforehand. And that whole thing of setting boundaries when you know that you need to set boundaries with a person or they will run over you every chance they can, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to go no contact, you're going to go um, grave rock, you're going to, when you can't, okay, set, in setting that boundary, I cannot give anybody any advice, counseling, nothing like that. And yeah, I'm only saying this for me. Yeah, to me, setting that boundary that, dude, you're not gonna, you're not gonna boss me around. You're not gonna make me half that of you. <laughs> Seriously. And just by the way, now I add a little bit more in. In his culture, women of any ethnic group, women are half that of a man. Any man. Man. So I have a master's degree in sociology. I taught against racism, sexism, ageism, all that kind of those negative isms at college and university. Okay, this is not me making it something up. I know for a fact it is part of that culture that he, where he grew up. I know for a fact. Okay, I've seen it enough in my lifetime. Now, this was happened in Texas. Yeah, just yesterday in Texas. I'm Texan, but no, he was going to try to tell me that I'm how I'm going to be because I'm a female. <laughs> definitely will not happen and you know as some people will say oh that just gave him what more he needs that that was his fuel I was fueling him blah, 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 whatever I don't care and in this situation I'm standing my ground and I'm letting him know no you are wrong and don't step over this boundary now some people will say how do we wind up blaming the victim again they're blaming the victim how do we wind up 
with these people? How do they know who we are? How do they know they can take advantage of? I think in some part they see that we don't put, we don't make boundaries. We don't set them. Whenever they smart off and you know, their first little, or for some of them it's a con game of, you know, they, they love bomb you. Whenever they off, we don't set a boundary. You know, like somebody starts saying all these good things about you. No, I don't know you. Uh-uh. <laughs> that's what I would do. I can, like I said, can't give anybody any fuss. But yeah, that's what I did. Uh-uh. Not happening. You know, and, and some people say, well, if something happened, if he got really furious because I dared to stand up to him, you know, a man coming from a woman, yeah, some would say, well, you caused it yourself. <laughs> You should have. Yeah, they love to blame the victim. I have a truck behind me, one of those, a big one. And, okay, we're on streets right here. Like, you, you're seeing the streets. No, you, you don't get it on somebody's tail. <laughs> I'm getting closer back to narcissism, Bill. So, yeah, the closer you get. The more they own the road. But anyway, <clears throat> I'm sure there's more of that. But like I said, I was not close enough except to see that big old grin. Oh my goodness, unbelievable. On his face when he thought he was going to prove to me that he is in control. Let's see if my car decides to, my SUV, yep, it's, it's driving itself. See this curve here? <laughs> it's, it's a 2019, yeah. And they, they keep you in the middle driving itself you couldn't really tell but I can yeah like the guy behind me I wag my finger at him <laughs> he's not getting so close some people in this world yeah but some of them are so far gone so that's how I see it they're so far you know into their own well they're into nar they're narcissistic big time and they believe nobody in the world can ever tell them anything and pretty much they can't because he probably will still keep doing it. Maybe he'll just find himself his own his, his himself another victim, a different person that he can make a victim. Like, he's not gonna make me a victim. Uh, I had a neighbor that did that that lived um, that was really bad before about she ran everything. And uh, I'm I'm not going through that kind of thing with anybody, no matter where it is, ever again. It was miserable for me. Because I'm I'm Okay, I don't know where I left off. My phone got hot and it turned it had turned it off and I don't know how you know if it saved that clip or what. <laughs> but basically I was being a little bit uh I don't know what you call it, but say but, but really telling the truth. Your culture can play a difference in how you respond. It is true. I'm like I said, I taught at college and university, this kind of stuff. Yeah, and I had to earn my degrees to do it. I didn't teach as a as a GA, no, I taught from my own ex education, my own degrees, using those. But, yeah, it, 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 your culture, the, what you grew up in, plays a big difference. I grew up in Texas, in a bad part of Texas. I mean, a rough, tough, grew up with a machete and a sawed-off shotgun as my toys kind of thing. Yeah, I'm a little bit on the tough side. <laughs> I'm not trying to brag. I'm just stating fact. It's reality. You grow up that rough, yeah. You're a little bit tough. So, when somebody does something like that, tries to step over my boundaries or tries to lay the boundaries themselves of where my boundaries can be, it's no. It's not. I wish I would have done that more in different situations. But I grew up with all this kind of stuff. I grew up from the beginning, born, raised into this kind of mentality. And uh, in Texas, I was born and raised in Texas, and yeah, you know, ah, uh, it's not happening. Plain and simple, I, I, I have a hard time. The whole thought of going, you know, and I do see where it would benefit a lot of people of behaving, you know, in the um, gray rock, doing the gray rock. And there were times I have done that when it was just really, I no, you know, I knew. I should go gray rock because people can be dangerous and I had to make that everybody has to do it for themselves to make that decision is this person about to become physically dangerous okay and may or maybe later on some kind of danger you know 
everybody has to judge for themselves. They have to pay the consequences of their own actions or inactions, you know. And I, so do I. So there are situations where I have said gray rock would be best, be, you know, for whatever reason. Or to go no contact, for whatever reason. But this one was no, stand my ground and draw my boundaries, my boundaries. I draw them. I remember when I was younger and don't pick up your DSM and say DID. No. When I was younger, I would say that there were times I'd have to be tough girl. That's what I called it, tough girl. And, the, and it is. If you go, if you're around people who are like this, me, myself, I had a tough side you know, that comes out. It's a protective tough side. It's self-defense. Okay, seriously, self-defense. And I know how to use it. And it doesn't have to be physical. It can also be mental, emotional, psych you know, psycho, not psycho, social, but <clears throat> socioeconomically, whatever. There's a side, you know, you take, you preserve, you know, self-preservation, self-defense. Yeah, okay, I think I'm going to wrap this one up. <laughs> I've gone on and on enough about it, but yeah. Okay, that, that situation did happen to me yesterday, just yesterday. It's kind of like everything that, I, that I've taught about this, everything that I have um, expressed in some way about this when you're tested on it, you know. And like I've always said, one size doesn't fit all. It's not going to be the same for every situation for every person because every situation is different because it's every person, yeah. So, yep, anyway, wrapping it up.